can AI do this? Squeaky floor be damned, let's do this thing. Hello friends, hello YouTube. I am back to continue our conversation about AI and specifically to speak to this fear that is so prevalent, this fear that has been circulating about how AI is going to replace us. And in the last video, I was talking about the one thing that sets us apart from AI and that that one thing is soul. And I wanted to expand on that a little bit here today because I know soul can be an abstract concept and we also don't all share the same belief about what that word means, about what soul means. So let me tell you what I mean when I say soul. When I say the word soul, I am talking about your eternal true soul self. The soul that you were before you came to this planet, before you entered this lifetime you are now currently living, and the soul you will be after. Your true soul self as a unique expression of the divine. And yes, I realize this is a spiritual belief that I have, but I just want to put that in context for you so you know where I'm coming from. I believe that God, the universe, source energy, that it creates through us, that it is always contracting and expanding, contracting and expanding. Each contraction leads to a greater expansion and gives birth to something new. It is constantly creating and it creates through us. And that is why each one of us is so unique. Each one of us is a unique channel for this divine creation, this divine expansion and expression to come through. And if you do not share my spiritual belief as it's related to soul, you might prefer to look at it as Carl Jung saw it. He equated the soul with the subconscious mind. And so you might then be able to say, okay, well, soul is about the unique expression of your individual subconscious and all the various factors that went in to the creation of it. So you have a one of a kind body and a one of a kind mind and you were born into a one of a kind family and you grew up in a unique environment, in a unique culture and you had all these experiences that are specific to you and that is the filter through which you experience the world and through which you express yourself, through which you contribute to the greater whole. There is only one you. There is only one true soul self, whether you're looking at it from a psychological perspective or a spiritual perspective. And the reason I think that this is important when we're talking about AI and specifically this fear that AI is going to replace us as creative people, as professional people, as entrepreneurs. This could be for someone who works in a corporation or for someone who works for themselves. If you're worried that a machine is going to replace you, this is one way to ensure that you are irreplaceable. Yes, many people are going to lose their jobs, but they're not going to lose their value as individual people who can make a contribution to the world. So if you are someone who stands in a factory putting lids on the toothpaste as it goes by, yes, a machine can replace you. A machine can replace you now if you have been checking out groceries for 25 years. You have worked as a grocery store checker and now we have self-checkout, and I've already seen that here in Los Angeles, much to my frustration. Let me just go on a quick side tangent here because I think what happens in the big cities happens first here and then it starts to spread throughout the rest of the country and the world. So what's happened here is we are being nudged and encouraged to use the self-checkout. So it just started out with one little self-checkout lane and then it grew and grew and grew. And the opportunities to have a human being check you out at the drugstore or the grocery store to check out your groceries and bag your groceries, those opportunities are getting smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where one drugstore in particular, I found this very demoralizing. They actually had 
their checkers stand next to the self checkout machines to help customers learn how to use the machines that would soon replace them and they got rid of those people so quickly and now you have no choice when you shop there. Those people lost their jobs and they were forced, I don't know if they were forced, but they were incentivized to stand there to teach people how to use the machines that would replace them. So I think it's really important to separate out your value as an individual human and what you can contribute to society and the world from your job. Some jobs will be replaced, but that doesn't mean that you are replaceable. There's a place for you because there's a place for all of us. And it might require some creative thinking to find your next new career, whatever that might be, if you end up being one of those people. But what I'm specifically thinking about are creative folks, and artists, maybe marketers, people who work in a creative business, it could be a corporation of some kind, and people who serve the public. Those are the kinds of people I'm thinking specifically about right now, and I think that it's really important for us to lean into soul and what makes us unique. And so what that actually looks like is courage. It's courage. The courage to let your freak flag fly. The courage to be your quirky, idiosyncratic self and to tell the truth of your experience. It's really the courage to be honest about who you are and this filter through which you experience the world and contribute to the world. And so for example, if you're on social media and you come across a post that's a little bit edgy, it kind of like triggers you a little bit, instead of scrolling through the comments to see what everybody else thinks so you can get a pulse on the general consensus and come up with the correct opinion, Stop, don't look at what everybody else is saying and lean into that. Maybe do some journaling, feel into it and ask yourself questions like, what does this remind me of? How does this make me feel in my body? What's coming up for me? What's my genuine opinion about this? Get to know who you really are before you take the temperature in the room and see who everyone else is. What AI is, is math. It is mathematical, it is algorithmic, it is going to create homogenization, it's going to create conformity, and it's going to always have the correct answer according to whatever the current correct answer is socially or politically. And have you ever been in a conversation with someone, maybe you're having a little debate, and they're like, let's Google it to see how right I am. <laughs> we know now that's bullshit because if they are aligned with the general consensus, it's going to confirm that for them. But back in the day, it wasn't like that before these algorithms were programmed to reflect what the current politically correct opinion is. You could get a whole host of wild opinions and that was exciting because the thing about soul is it's very mysterious. It is wild, it's unpredictable, it's surprising and it is unknowable in a way, in the same way that God, universe, or source is the great ineffable. Soul is also unknowable. And that's what makes it so thrilling and special and unique and triggering. And so that's why I'm saying it takes courage to actually come from that place because it won't always be socially acceptable and you have to be able to withstand that and to keep creating and to keep coming up with new ideas and to keep showing up as your authentic true self and making space for other people to do it as well. You're replaceable when you're mediocre. You're replaceable when you blend in. Any machine can do that. Any machine can regurgitate the general consensus. Any machine can tell you what the correct answer is. But human beings are different. We are very weird and idiosyncratic and quirky. Those are the two words that I keep thinking about when I'm thinking about soul and mysterious as well. There is a depth there. There's a whole history that is coming to bear on this moment for me. And then you have a whole history that you're bringing to bear on this moment. Like I may be irritating the fuck out of you right now and you might not even know why. That's soul. <laughs> That's 
soul than not knowing. And so I think that takes courage too, to not know for sure that you are correct, to not have everything mathematically perfect. Think about Star Wars. Think about how the good guys that we are rooting for, they're all like ragtag, they all look different. There's like this big furry beast guy. There's a tiny little robot guy. And then there's the copper looking big eyed guy. We have Han Solo with his leather vest and everybody looks different. They're all like weird in their own special way and they have different personality quirks. And then you look at the bad guys and it's all uniformity. They're shiny, white, clean, perfect, robot-looking people. I personally find it very depressing to drive through a neighborhood of tracked housing where all the homes are beige little rectangles that match and they all have little square green lawns. It's like samey, 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 samey. You just long for there to be like some quirky, crooked house with the roof falling off and a sloppy dog out front and kids running through the sprinklers. Like that is soul. Soul is the Weasley's house from Harry Potter. It is not beige, 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 beige. If you are just another beige house in the neighborhood, you are replaceable. How does this translate to creativity? It translates to creating content with a prompt where AI gives you the correct answer instead of you struggling and trying to figure out what you mean and maybe it's not coming out clearly and so maybe you suffer over that video or that blog post or that book for a very long time and then when you finally put it out, you feel like you're taking a risk. That feels like soul. Instead of just shitting out day after day, the same old memes with the same old platitudes we've all seen a jillion times. Yeah, people will spread that shit around and the optics looks really good, but do you care about the person who is putting out those memes day after day after day? Do you know anything about them? Do you care about who they are? Or could someone just step in and do the same job for them and you would have no idea? I follow a couple of different people, quite a few actually on YouTube that I have followed for over a decade. And these people do tend to just kind of make the same videos over and over again. One lady in particular, she makes like fashion and makeup videos. And then another one I'm thinking of, she makes food videos. And both of them, they just show up that day and they just talk about their life, what went wrong that week, what went right, why they love this color, why this fruit is their favorite. And I find it delightful because they are human. They have soul. I like to hang out with them. I'm not there because they're teaching me about the health properties of this food or the quality of this makeup. I might enjoy those little tips, but what I'm really there for is soul. I'm there for their unique personal expression and because I enjoy them. I like them. I found a new woman this year on YouTube. She's brand new. She just started this year and she's already building quite an audience because of people like me. The first video I saw of her, I ran over to share her with my patrons over on Discord because she's so real and authentic and she's not trying to be anything. I'm not saying being different is about forcing yourself to be different or to be outlandish or to stand out. It's about being genuine and having the courage to be honest. Her name is Lydia Foxglove and her channel is The Cozy Creative. So let me send more people her way right now. She's an author and I think she mainly writes fantasy, but she is so unique and so different, not at all flashy. She's not really trying to impress anybody. She just kind of shows up and talks in like a normal tone of voice about her life and it's not particularly exciting, but you just love her anyway. You just love her because she's so real. And there's another woman who came up in popularity during the pandemic. Her name is Heidi Clements. Welcome to Heidi is her Instagram handle. And you probably know who she is because she's got like 700,000 followers now. And she's a woman, I think in her late 60s now, 
who gets dressed in front of the camera. Like she'll often just start out with like pants and a bra. She puts together these really unique outfits, usually with some kind of combination of vintage clothes she finds, but it's not the outfits and it's not the getting dressed that make her special. So many people have copied her now. But what makes her special is she does a narration over the footage of her getting dressed and she makes funny faces. She's not trying to be beautiful. She's not trying to look young. She's just being who she is and putting on her outfit for the day. And the narration over it is a story from her life. She's just telling the story of her life in little pieces and it's really interesting. They're just short little videos and they spread because of soul. People love her because they sense the realness in what she's doing. There's like a human connection there that's happening. That is what I mean when I say soul. You don't have to try to be anything other than what you are. You only have to trust that you are enough and have the courage to let the truth of who you are on the inside come out to play on the outside. So when you go into that board meeting, let's say you work at a corporation, you're coming in with a strong point of view. People might love it, people might hate it, it might bomb, but if it works, that is how innovation happens. That is how growth happens. That's when people get excited and you have to be willing to risk being disliked, being attacked, being canceled to find that gold. It's the gold that is in, you could say it's the gold in your shadow or your subconscious, or you could say it's the gold in your soul. It's the reward that comes from taking a risk. Sometimes it doesn't work. People tend to have a really strong reaction to authenticity, but if you're coming from a good place, if you mean no harm, if you are genuine, heart-centered, I think you're gonna have a better experience than you might expect, and that more people than not are gonna love who you are if you'll just give them the opportunity to experience that. And if the idea of giving who you are frightens you, maybe you work in a service industry, think about allowing people to be who they are. Think about being really deeply embodied and grounded in yourself and open to experience people's true soul self. Really listen, deeply listen, really see deeply observe. That is a way of being soulful as well. Letting the world be what it is instead of trying to control everything. Machines are about control, predictability, conformity, precision. Soul is very messy and mysterious and full of magic and surprises. So I hope this inspired you to Dare to be honest about who you are and to let other people be that as well so we can move into this new age of AI and maybe use the AI from a more soulful place. So instead of creating using prompts and just like cranking it out all day long, maybe somebody takes these tools and works with them and struggles and does the hard work of trying to express something from within using these tools. I think you could use them perhaps to create something innovative and new and fresh and honest, but I don't think we're there yet. That's not what I see happening. I just see people like pushing a button to produce an image and I don't see soul in that. I think we'll get there. I think people are gonna get really sick of that I think some people already are, and some of us just were never into it to begin with. I'm one of those people. <laughs> I don't think we're here to live a life of ease and push a button and make this happen. I think we're here for a reason, and I think meaning comes from the struggle, from the darkness, from the shadows, from the effort, from failing and learning and growing and those awesome aha moments that can only happen when, you, when you've been like working on something for a really long time or developing your craft or taking a big risk. I get very fired up about this, and I know I'm talking in circles now, but yay soul, go us. Go in peace, my friend. And until we meet again, always remember life is change. Oh, is it ever? Change is magic, magic is life, and the journey is the creation. Much love to you, peace.